exams coming along and it so happened that I got selected for a state level championship which was going to national level as well. I had to travel into state. This is when I was back home in India. And my mum accompanied me, but she wasn't um, a professional in doing dance makeup. And those were the times where, you know, you didn't spend too much on a makeup artist or something um, to put on your makeup when you're going for a competition. I remember I went to my teacher and I told her, I'm a bit nervous. I don't know if I'll be able to put my makeup on by myself properly. I don't know if I'll be able to perform my steps properly. What if my costume's not correctly done? What if I didn't look perfect enough? You know what she told me? All she said, just focus on your craft. Let your body and soul perform. Let it give your best and then these things would not matter whether your eyeliner is just perfect or whether your costumes are just enough or you know your veils are ringing perfectly just the way it should they would not matter just focus on your craft focus on what you meant to showcase focus on the topic hello my name is Aarti Bajaj and I will be talking to you about Indian classical and contemporary dancing. Indian contemporary dancing. Before we go to that, let's go to the word contemporary. It's breaking out of norms, breaking out of usual formulas, breaking out of one way of storytelling, it's the way I describe it is two plus two normally makes four. But when one brain says, Well, I'm not going to have two plus two is equal to four anymore, and I why can't I make two plus two is equal to seven or six? That's where contemporary comes. When you want to break beyond boundaries and normal formulas, contemporary rises. But before you go to contemporary, it's important for one to understand the basics, which means the classical. That's where the classical comes and how, how equally important it is for a creative mind both to learn the classical and the contemporary. So the classical teaches you the discipline, the, the, the normal norms of two plus two is equal to four, whereas contemporary teaches you, well, okay, my brain has understood that two plus two is equal to four, I'm going to make 2 plus 2 is equal to 5 or 6. But when you know that 2 plus 2 traditionally makes 4, when you go out in that new realm of creating something completely different, you wouldn't go berserk and make 2 plus 2 is equal to 20 because you know how much or how important or how far your limits are to make 2 plus 2 is equal to whatever. That's what I do, or I tell my students, or anyone who I teach, in the classical or contemporary, that it's very important for your brain, your body, to understand the norms and the discipline of classical, whichever dance form you do, and then once you've understood, you can never learn at all, but once you've understood, and then let your brain thrive with this contemporary ideas of creativity. And as the word says, contemporary means modern. It has no norms, it has no boundaries, and you can do pretty much whatever you know and whatever you want to do with that thought. When I describe it in contemporary, again, contemporary rose that 20th century where there came a phase where people weren't ready to just limit their creativity to one box. And when the, you know, the globalization and the world started becoming one big international village, I call it, when the internationalism started becoming a new, new norm, people wanted to interna internationalize or globalize their creative ideas as well. So when it comes to the contemporary, a, a fruit cannot fall too far from the tree. You still say the story. You must still convey the message. 
in Indian dancing, which is different to Western dancing, you can never detach your face to your body, which means I will always have, whether I'm just doing a step or telling a story, my eyes, my nose, my lips, my neck will also have an integral part in that step. It will not just be a pure technical display. There will always my, my peripheries and my limbs and my other senses will always be part of that step or that repertoire or that story. This will be happy. This will be sad. So, a full alapadmaka, which is a hand movement, showing happiness, and then dola this movement, showing sadness. So there's a, a, a specific construct that you have to do to convey this message. Whereas in contemporary, I could say happiness and sadness. I could say happiness, sadness. There's no construct to it. You could do whatever you want with it as far as your body, the other parts of the body, the eyes, the face, the lips, the nose, the hair, the limbs, the fingers, the fingertips. Everything else is conveying the story, conveying the message. So when I construct a contemporary move or a contemporary piece, I always remember how I would have used this expression in my classical pattern, and then what parts of that classical pattern needs a bit more exaggeration or a bit more liberty. So not hating the classical pattern, I'm not disliking the pattern, but maybe there is an expression, maybe I just don't want to show my happiness just this much and sadness just this much. I want to show my happiness more than that, which means there's a beautiful breeze and I can sense everything on my, every part of my body and I saw you and it just, I, the excitement was so much. If I want to show all of that, why should I just con constrict it to this one pattern? Therefore, I feel this emotion needs to be explored a little bit more. Hence, I would use that, uh, that little construct I'm going to explore it a bit more in contemporary fashion. Similarly is with the, um, let's say, I'm very angry with you, okay, um, in a classical manner. This is angry. in classical, but in contemporary, I can bring pots and pans. I can do whatever I want, which means I can just tear my, my clothes, I can pull my hair around, I can, I can just be really mad. That's the liberty of contemporary. But having said that, always remembering the essence of storytelling, because that is what Indian dancing is all about. It doesn't just convey, or it doesn't just show you technical skills. It doesn't just tell you that is what. Um, I guess my teacher meant when I was eight, eight years old that dance gets better with age, which means my back bends and splits might not be the perfect when I turn 40 compared to someone who is a 10 year old, but I will have the meaning of why I did that back bend. Maybe I just did that back bend to hold the hand as my love. Or I did a split to reach out to him. So all of this meaning will get better with age because I will learn to understand that expression. And that is what dancing is all about. And that is what contemporary is. Not limiting your expressions to one box. You get the liberty, you get the, the wings to change your own formulas. Two plus two is no more needed to be four, but also still knowing how far your wings can be spread, only when your brain's been logically trained by classical. So let's explore an expression of complaining, jealousy, sadness uh, in classical 
in Bharatnatyam versus a contemporary style. So there's a, there's a repertoire or a dance piece called Shabdam in Bharatnatyam. And one of the Shabdams is where the, the, the dancer or the lover says to her husband, I remember those times. I remember those times. When I used to used to pull me around, make me sit on your lap and look at me. And I used to feel shy. But now you don't look at me. And my heart breaks and it's in pain. What should I do? Please tell me. Oh my dear husband. So this is the story or the expression that the wife wants to tell the husband how in those beautiful times you used to hold me closer, make me sit next to you, look at me with love and I used to shy up. And now where has that love gone? And when I don't see that, my heart's in pain and it breaks. Please tell me, what should I do? My husband. This is a construct of a classical way of saying something. Let's keep this expression itself. Let's keep this emotion it's a bit more at the deeper level. What's even underlying, what's beneath these just words? How can we free the wife's anger a bit more? How can we bring those memories that she has from the past a bit more um, vividly? How is it possible? Let's do and let's try. There is no set choreography, there is, but we, we just make sure that we still remember those those emotions, those expressions, yeah? One is um, her, her beautiful memories, which are very vividly present in her, in her beautiful space memories in her brain. And the present, where she's really intensely missing those moments. And this, 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 this distance is killing her, making her angry, making her agitated. How is she going to use her body now to showcase that? So let's just try, yeah? So beautiful memories when we were out together, how we held each other closely, looked in each other's eyes, and how I curled in your emb embracement. But now, you don't even look at me. My within is breaking. What have I done to get this pain? Tell me. What have I done to get this pain? Just a random exploration of that expression in a contemporary style.
Natya Shastra. It's a text that is like a like a Bible, like a the main source for any Indian classical dance form. Natya Shastra was written by the scholar named Bharat Muni, and it has got all the text. It's got 36 chapters, and all that chapters they deal with the yangik, the vachik, which means the the stage, the the steps, the grammar, the the makeup, the the expressions, all of those elements that a dancer, that a performer needs in a performance of Indian classical, is written in Natya Shastra. One of the most important elements of Indian classical dancing is Navrasa, which is nine expressions. It is said that for any living being, nine expressions is something that we imbibe within, and in order to express or tell or portray an emotion, or a story, you use one of these nine expressions. It's the being, all of these nine expressions makes a being. So the names of the nine expressions, let me just talk about them a little bit more in detail. So the nine expressions, the Navrasas of life and of Indian classical dancing. The first one is Shringaras. Shringar, love, romance passion. It's called as the king of expressions. I will explain it a bit more in detail. Let's go to the second expression. The second expression is Hatsiras, which means laughter, joy. The third expression is Rodrovas, which means anger, fury. The fourth one is Karuna. Karuna means compassion, mercy. The fifth one is bibatsya. Bibatsya means disgust, aversion. The next one, the sixth one, is bayanak. It is, which means horror, which means terror. The eighth ras, or the eighth expression, is viras, which means heroism, pride. And the ninth one is adbut, amazement, amusement. You don't understand something beyond this realm. So out of all these nine expressions that we just spoke about, my favorite, and also it is called as the king of the expressions, is Sringaras, the expression of love. Now love itself can't just be one type of love or love. It has so many other attributes to it, so many different types of love. Love can be someone you be with together. Love could be longing. Love could be jealousy. Love could be um, the pain of being separated from someone. All of these ums or all of these different, you know, the, the little um, various components of love, all of this fall under the Sringa Ras. Um, I still remember 13, 14 years old and my teacher when she was teaching us about the rasas, the nine expressions, and when she was showing um, the different gestures um, or different expressions, I just looked at her and I thought maybe it's not something that I can ever do because she was so, so beautiful. She was so um, expressive. And, you know, the curious mind just wanted to ask, and I said, how could you, or how is it possible for you to make your expression so convincing? And the thing that my teacher told me, which I will always remember, and I'd like to give it to you guys as well, is an expression, when only done with the body, is only a superficial layer. It's just a technique. So if I am angry, and if I just do this, where I'm widening my eyes, moving my eyelids, frowning my head, clenching my teeth. All of this is just the physical attributes of it. But when I think of that anger from within, 
those physical attributes suddenly gain a life. And when you bring that life into your physical attributes or your physical components and put it on your stage for your audience, it transcends, it gets through. You know how when someone's watching a movie or a show and a scene is happening on the stage or on the screen and we as audience start crying. It's not just because of the physical movement of the, of the artist that made that, that audience or the, the viewer feel it. It was something that the artist felt it, grew it, brought it outside through their expressions or body as a, comp, you know, as a tool. And when, it, when this body felt it and it transcended to the audience, it, it, it then goes and creates a life of its own. It didn't really make a lot of sense to me at that time, but as I grew as an artist and as a human being, I now understand what it means. I think um, it's all about feeling every emotion before you give it a form of an expression. So let's just explore the expression of love. I would not say anything and just use my eyes or my face to just express the emotion of being passionately in love with someone. And now this loved one is not near me. I think of him, the beautiful times that we were together. But he's not here anymore. And I feel the pain of separation, the longing. I don't know when he's going to come back, or will he ever come back? But I'll always love him. Whether he comes or he doesn't. With any forms or art in itself is for everyone out there who believes in creativity or arts, artists, I would just like to say we can't. We can't keep this beautiful structure, beautiful construct of things and ideas and emotions into boxes of caste, colour, creed, religion, origin, geography. The world has become an international village. We're all internationalists. We have started exploring different tastes and food and clothing from all over the world. It's about time that we start merging it's about time we start collaborating the ideas. There's so much out there that we as artists can work together in collaborations with the ideas and expressions that can not only just develop and nourish and, and, and build the world of arts as a whole, but also to humanity in today's time especially today in the, in the times of this global health crisis. If we've learned one thing, that is that the entire unit of this universe, of this earth, is one. We're all connected, we're all one. So my takeaway and my giveaway and my only ambition with the arts is that 
we, we, we break these boundaries of these geographical constructs and become this international artists who are ready to explore ideas and get into our you know areas of uh, out of comfort zone and let's explore each other let's explore our arts together